In this episode, I will teach you how to communicate like a professional player by doing proper reports, status updates and short calling. Welcome to Loto's Lab, episode 32, today about communications in-game. They are super important, not many people do them in ranked, but I want to showcase to you how big of a difference they can make when it comes to infusing your teammates with confidence on how to move on the map. So I broke down the communications categories into three different ones. Reports, status updates, and short calling. Those three, all of them have a different function, but have similar outcomes. Essentially, what you're, the first type, the category reports, is, um, is used when you die. Like, that's, you just report what happened, right? So let's say you, you have a duel on, on, uh, somewhere on the map, you die, you dealt some damage, you didn't deal damage, but what you need to do first is not blame the game, right? And not blame your teammates in comms, you should never do that. But the first thing that you should be your habit, right? Should be your habit is to say where, how many damage, right? Preferably in this order. And I'm sometimes guilty as well of making this order not in the preferred way, but you want to say what happened where on the map, how many players did you see, and how much damage did you do to them, right? So for example, when when I'm on ascent on A, and I'm being pushed, right, by one player, I just have a 1v1 gunfight, and I die here, and I die as a jet, and I dealt 80 damage to the Phoenix, I say, A main, Phoenix, half HP, right? That will tell my teammates exactly what happened, so they no, don't need to even look at the minimap. What you're trying to achieve with your communications in general is you want to build a virtual image of the minimap for your teammates just by using your very condensed communications. And on the pro level, I can guarantee you that pro players are actually trying to avoid looking at the minimap when it's not needed. They achieve that by everyone having very strict communications that also build those expectations of what has, what's happening on the minimap. So reports, are, even if you don't have good English, you can still do damage reports. Whenever you're losing a duel, just build up that habit that you need to just say where on the map. So write like, the position on the minimap where you have you know names of those areas on the map. How many players one or two. If it's like multiple players, try to just say three players instead of saying who, typically, right? If you have a one of you on duel, tell your teammates who was it, because that also gives information. Like if you have one of you on duel against a cypher, when he's on attack, he's most likely lurking. That means that the other side of the map might be might have the rest of the players, right? And the damage is important, by the way. And let's talk a little bit about the damage as well, because that's something that I see is a bit problematic on even at Immortal 3 and low rating level that I play, is when you deal 80 damage or 70, you should never call low HP. That's literally half HP because it takes two Vandal or um, Phantom Bullets, sometimes even three, right, to kill someone. So it doesn't make much difference when it comes to aiming at people. If you call low, the expectation should be that's a player that is going to get killed with one rifle bullet. So typically with 35 HP left or 40 in case of Vandal. So it's safe to say that someone is low when you deal, for example, 120. If you dealt 105 damage with a Phantom, that is not low, my friends. Unless you're certain that person had small shields. But if you don't know how much HP did he have in the beginning and you dealt 105, you call half HP. Why? Because with 105 damage, there's 45 HP left. That means that that person still needs to get hit by two Vandal bullets or two Phantom bullets, right? Does that make sense? Because many people don't understand that. And they call, oh, low HP, low HP. So you lower your crosser because he's low, right? And you want to hit more consistent shots on that player. And then he survives one bullet and gets a tap on you. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? Right? So avoid saying low HP when you dealt between 80 to 105. If you dealt 110 and you know that all of your players are playing Vandals, probably calling low is okay. But also, specifically avoid calling 1 HP on people who are not 1 HP, right? So there's like a, there's like a bridge between the damage that you should call as 1 HP. 
And for me, in my eyes, calling one HP on someone means that he's left with enough HP to be killed by one classic bullet. Because that's like a designated uh, amount of damage that you typically would do minimum with a secondary weapon, right? So a leg shot for a classic is 22 damage, 26 with a body shot. If you dealt enough damage to have a person die to that one classic bullet, I would call one HP. And it can still be misleading if someone is playing a shorty or something, right? So always have that in mind. But main thing, main, my main pet peeve is calling low HP when you deal between 70 to 105. It's so important to get that bad habit out of the way and focus on proper, properly calling the damage, right? If you're not certain about the, the exact, uh, you know, how to call, just call the number. You dealt 105, call it 100 damage on Phoenix, whatever, right? It's that simple. But it's it's so important to not get fake info to your teammates because that can lose them the rounds. Now, reports, as I said, are something that I expect every player in the game on any rank to actually do at some point because they are the simplest. And even if you don't know English, like, well, you can still do them because the, the map names are on the map and you know all the agents' names, and you probably know the numbers, right? The second category is status updates. Now, this is something that I believe not everyone can do, or not everyone can do while focusing on the game, so they're a little, little bit more advanced. Pro players are expected to do status updates, and in pro play, they are insanely important. So what, what is a status update? Let's take, again, the same ascent map, uh, as an example, let's say I'm playing Jet on short. At the beginning of the round, I will hear some informations, right? For example, I will hear that Sova is using an arrow uh, from A main. I can call that. I can call Sova arrow A main because that will also build up a little bit of information for my teammates. And if I don't hear any footsteps after that arrow, I will call, also call that because the status update is that using the arrow but they're not pushing loudly, right? All of my teammates now will know this might be either just a default setup or they're just playing for contact, right? So the player on A will get a little bit more, let's say, focused because he knows he might expect a silent peak at some point, right? If I hear someone, if I play short and I hear multiple footsteps on top mid, I'm definitely going to call, I hear multiple footsteps on top mid or say to be, you know, more condensed with the formations, top mid, Two players, for example, top mid, multiple players. Try to do your comms as clean and short as possible because the thing is, you don't want to clog the comms. If all of the players will have good comms, the more, sh the, the shorter and cleaner they are, the more information can be shared. Because if everyone is speaking too much, well, then it's become then it becomes chaos, right? But status updates are in insanely important. And in status updates, you can literally say everything, right? If you hear that a breach used one as a flash, you should probably call it breach used a flash. Why? Because it's important to understand that at some point of the round, having the knowledge if breach already used one or two flashes will change the way that someone can play the round. If you're certain there are no flashes, you don't have to play anti-flash. If you're certain there's only one flash, you know how to take properly a fight after the second one was being used. So all of those small pieces of information are actually important. And it's they become even more important at a higher level because they build up plans. For, for example, when you know there's a team that is now executing a site and this Viper used both of her snake bites on site during the execute, and you give, that, give those uh, informations as a status update to your teammates, they will be able to understand that there's no post plant from Viper because she used two stake bites. But if you fail to say that, even though you're defending a site and you saw both of the snake bites being used and you don't tell that to your teammate, they might actually play differently because they think that the Viper might play post plant with the snake bites. That's why it's so important to, to understand that the status updates Although they are advanced form for communications, they, again, build up a virtual image of the round in your teammate's head, even though they might be on completely different side of the map. And that's even more important for the players who are rotating towards you. Because by having 
important status updates, they can be certain on that own decision making, right? If you say that they're pushing A side, A side, A side, pushing A side, A side, but they never cross the line towards the site, then you're fake essentially updating the status on the teammates that might now rotate from B towards A, right? The cypher is going to leave B and going to go all the way to heaven when the players are still in A main or just not even, you don't even know if they are there. This is why it's important to also understand the difference between, let's say, a lot of footsteps being happening on A main and when the players are committing. Typically, a commitment is being done when players cross this line on site, right? Like on B side, that will be just essentially B main side, uh, sorry, B main line. So it's important to understand that the status updates will affect the decision making of your team. Over rotations can happen if you give wrong status updates, but also anchors can stand still on their sides if you give proper status updates from A side to B side, right? That's why it's a little bit more advanced, but it's insanely important. It's insanely important to do those if you're able to. They require a little bit more knowledge of the game, but it's always something that you can also practice. Like, think about it this way. You don't need to look at anything. You can just play off your sound. If you hear a flash, just say, breach flash, right? If you hear a KO uh, flash being used, KO flash, all of those informations, even though brief, are still helpful to the teammates, right? Just those brief status updates or for example if you hear there's one of my pet peeves as well you guys probably watched the lotus lab episode on a fracture on the sage wall how important is the sage wall on that map right and how important is playing around it and the same is applied to split on mid even if you don't see the split the, the sage wall but you hear it being built up you need to call it because that gives the image of that happening to your teammates who are not even on that part of the map, which will, again, affect their decision-making because it builds up the image, at least it should, of players on the opposing team doing over-rotations because the Sage Wall pops up. And the same thing happens with Smokes. It's another thing that is... Um, another thing that is so important to call to your teammates. Let's say... Um, let, let's, do an, let's do an example. Uh, let me clear this, and we're going to zoom in on A side. Now, if, if there's a player um, if there's a player retaking this side, right? Let's say, let's say we have two opponents like this, and then the, uh, there's also an omen, and the omen uses a smoke on double dose. When this omen goes into heaven and he sees on the minimap the jet looking at the direction here and seeing nothing, he's gonna assume this is all clear. But the status update from jet is so important. If the jet says, I'm smoke double dose or double dose smoke, right? Then this omen will anticipate or should anticipate that the jet doesn't have any information of what's happening on the site. Because on the minimap, you don't see enemy smoke. You can see if someone's um, POV is blocked because he's not going to have the vision cone. But when you just take a brief look on the minimap, that's not something that you're going to be paying attention a lot or you're just going to miss it. So that's why it's so important to call those pieces of utility. Call the sage wall when it's being built up. Call the position of it. Call the smokes that are being, you know, being used on your position because they also build an image of what is happening. Think about it this way. Brimstone has a limited amount of smokes. If you see you're playing mid on Ascend and you see two Brimstone smokes being used on uh, mid and short, calling those two smokes is actually very valuable. Why? Because when the attackers use two smokes to control mid like this, that means that only one smoke is being left for an execute. And if that's the case, that might affect your positioning on B side. Like if you know there's only one smoke, then most likely that smoke should be used for CT. That means you can play on market and be more confident in your decision making, right? All of those, all of those uh, small details that you do in status updates are so important for everyone in the team. So remember, when you hear a piece of utility and you know that you're capable of doing proper status updates by having short and clean communication, use that to your advantage. It will help your teammates build a proper image of the round. 
Now, um, priority of comms. What happens when, for example, let's say I'm being pushed on A main, right? I'm the jet player uh, and I'm being pushed on A main by multiple players and I'm dead. What is the most important here to call, right? Is status update important or is damage, status, dam damage report more important? And in cases when I'm being on, uh, I'm being in a, a target of an actual execute from my team, uh, from my opponents, I try to first first put priority on just saying how what is happening and how many players. The damage is not important. The status update on the utility is also less important. So when I'm being pushed by multiple players on A side, and I die as a as an anchor, for example, I just say three players on site. C um, committed or like execution or execute or already on site and then I say where they are. I kind of ignore all the small details that are not as important because first I want to build the minimap positions to my teammates by calling them when they are fresh. Then, judging by the situation, if they are waiting for like a retake or something, then I can give them status updates if I still remember what was happening, what what which pieces of utility were being used um, and if I did any damage, and sometimes I, if I don't want to clog the comms, I will just write the damage in chat. The problem with that though is that Riot unfortunately still didn't fix voice comms in EU. So sometimes when you're gonna type in damage, you're gonna block yourself from talking for five minutes. So that's very annoying for someone who wants to communicate in the game, by the way. But yeah, but that's essentially those are the status up updates. And reports. Reports, as I say, reports are something that you can do even if you don't have good English. Status updates are requiring a little bit more efficiency in English, but they're expected of any advanced player to be for being used. And when it comes to pro players, well, obviously those two are just better requirements for a pro player. But again, those are not complicated things. You just need to know what to do. Right? So if you follow those rules on what to pay attention to and how to communicate, it's actually very something very simple. And if you're going to try it over and over again, you're going to build a habit of saying that stuff. Now, short calling is the first third, third category. Oh my god, left right here. Short calling is the third category of communications. The most advanced, and I would advise to use short calling only to players that have the ability to understand the game on a higher level, right? And I'm not calling here like, oh, short calling, um, short calling like uh, five men push B. Everyone can say that, right? That short calling, I mean like actual build up of strategy. If you're calling like, for example, let's play default, right? But you don't know what default is, don't do that. Because if you call something, you're expected to understand the outcome of it. If you guys watch me, for example, today when we played actually Ascend, I called playing default against a um, low buy from our opponents. And I literally said as a short calling, short calling, please don't push anything. Just hold angles. They are on lower buy. We want to punish the over peaks. So just hold. If we get a kill, we group up and go together. If we don't get a kill, we still group up and just go together against the lower buy enemies. Unfortunately, our jet didn't understand that, and instead just pushed mid alone into pizza, died, gave a gun uh, to a player who had a, a sheriff, and then that guy with the brand new phantom from jet killed two more players, right? So even if you do proper shot calling, people will still do some random stuff. But it is what it is. Shot calling is just like a more complicated... Um, role that I don't want to explain fully here because I don't think we have enough time and examples to just showcase how can you IGL and that's going to be like a separate video at some point but I just wanted to make sure that people understand that short calling is very different from report it is what it is, uh, it is, what it is. it's very different from reports and status updates those type of two communications are very easy to do short calling is too difficult to for many players so avoid doing that but it's also disingenuous from players saying i don't like to communicate because you know they don't feel comfortable in short calling but you can still do the report you can still do the status update right that's something that you should focus on and every player can do report and status updates short calling leave it to the experienced players that want to do that not everyone has to be short calling right but also what is very important 
I didn't want to make a special um, special category for that, but I just want to mention that some form of utility usage can be also called shot calling, I guess. For example, when I'm playing Breach, it's so important to understand, specifically for initiated players. And and that is that is something that many people fail to understand. When you're playing ranked and you're an initiator, let's say I'm Breach, and, and my teammate is in front of me, and I will flash for him. I'm not saying, hey, Jet, I can flash for you here. You want? That is awful. That is awful because, one, that Jet now has to understand the question, think about it, assess it, answer you, and then you do it. That's so much time wasted. When you're playing initiator, you have to be a leader even if you don't want to. So to keep the comms short and clean and to also minimize the time wasted, you say, instead of, hey, Jet, do you want a flash here? You say, Jet, I'm flashing for you, go in. And then you flash. And if he doesn't go in with the flash, unlucky. But you did your job. Now she has to do her job and she needs to create the space with the flash that you made. But because of the way that you communicate, you infuse confidence in that jet to make a move, right? But if you start asking questions, you build up actual indecision into the, your teammates and yourself. So you might actually die because of that. It's always better to make a wrong call, but a confident call, than do a question mark and die because of that. Like, some calls will be bad, but if everyone follows the call, that means that you're making a collective effort to do something in game, and if you lose, well, unlucky, sometimes you'll lose, sometimes we'll win, right? But it's important to understand that confidence is one of the main factors of having actual good performance in games, specifically in games like Valorant, when you need the confidence of understanding what is happening. And all of, all of the stuff that I'm explaining, status reports, damage reports, and the short calling with the utility is so crucial. So remember, if you have utility that is meant to support other players, never ask them if they want to, but just tell them that you're doing for them and expect them to use it. If they don't use it, it's not your fault. You communicate it, right? And, uh, yeah. Also, one more thing, I guess, when it comes to status updates. Uh, when you play a Flash agent, like, for example, Yoro or Phoenix, always try to call when you're using a piece of utility, right? When you're, like, flashing for entrance, you say, flashing sight, or, like, flashing close, flashing out of the smoke. All of those will also build up um, the decision that your teammates will have to do um, because they, they will have to do it because they have an expectation then, right? So always try to keep your, your comms clean and short and follow the rules that I explained in this video, I guess. This is way longer video than I expected it to be. Hope you guys learned something and we'll see each other next time. Bye-bye.